This video will cover completing renovation design in the software. The first thing to consider when creating a renovation design project is the materials you're going to be using in the project and how you want them to be represented in the 2D plans and in the 3D model. The elements in the database can be altered to suit your office standards on how you represent new construction, existing construction, and demolition. Once you have the elements created in the database, you need to lay out the existing building and then create the new structure and modify any existing walls that will be altered or demolished during the remodel. In this video, we will add a small family room onto an existing house following that methodology. Let's look at the catalog of elements and create new walls, doors, and windows. Select File, Catalogs, Catalog Manager. The Catalog Manager dialog box will appear and allow you to access all of the elements in the catalog and add new elements, modify existing elements, or delete any elements you do not require. We will be creating new walls, an existing wall style, and a demolition wall. Select the exterior walls group and right click in the wall element list. Select add element. The walls dialog box will appear. At the top of the dialog, you can specify a name for the wall. This name is what is appearing in the catalog panel and in the bill of materials. So choose a name that will be easy to find in the catalog and is an accurate depiction for the bill of materials. For our example, I'll be creating a wall to represent existing structure. So I will place the word existing at the beginning of the name. Click on the Appearance tab. Under the Appearance tab, we can specify how we want the wall to appear in 2D and 3D. Highlight the exterior side component and then click on the Select button. This will allow you to choose from a, a material for the exterior side of the wall when it is in 3D mode. You can choose from the choices offered in our default catalog, or if you want an exact representation of an existing wall, then right click in the materials list and select add element. In the materials properties dialog box, click on the use texture option. The select button will become active and allow you to find a JPEG or bitmap image on your hard drive to use. If you have a digital picture, you can take a picture of the existing wall finish and save it as a JPEG or bitmap image, and then use it here. Your model will then even look more like your client's existing house. You may need to adjust the height and width of the texture image you are importing so it appears the correct size in your model. For example, changing the tile height of a brick material would make the bricks look taller. Changing the tile width would make the bricks look longer. When you apply the image to a wall, it will tile it across the wall meaning it will repeat it across the wall up and down to fill the wall. Give the new material a name and click OK. Click OK again in the Materials dialog box. At the bottom of the components list are the 2D structure and 2D veneer. These represent how the line work will appear on the 2D drawings. Click on one to select it and then holding down the Shift button, select the other. Holding down the Shift button allows you to multiple select components and change their options at the same time. At the bottom of the dialog box is the Line Style Options. Click on the Select button. This will bring you to the Line Styles dialog box, where you can choose a line style for the components. Since these lines will be depicting existing structure, we want them to be fairly light, line work, so our new structure is more prevalent on the drawing. Click on the Light Building Lines group and a list of building line styles will appear. Choose a light continuous line style and click OK. In a 2D view, our existing structure will have a lighter line work than our new structure. Click on the Quantity tab. In this area, you can define the pricing for the wall. Since this is an existing structure, you don't want to include its construction pricing in your final bill of materials. Uncheck the Include element in Quantities and set the assembly option to None. Now this existing wall will not appear in the quantity reports. Click OK to add the new existing construction wall to the catalog choices. Right click and choose Add Element again and we will create a demolition wall. The Walls dialog box will appear. At the top of the dialog box you can specify a demolition wall for the name. Click on the Trim tab. Delete all instances of trim from the wall by selecting them and then clicking on the Delete button. This will ensure they don't appear in our 3D views or quantify. Click on the Appearance tab. 
Under the Appearance tab, we can specify how we want the wall to appear in 2D and in 3D. Highlight the exterior side component and holding down the Shift button, choose the last 3D component in the list. This will select all 3D components at the same time. Click on the Select button. Since this wall is to be demolished, we want it to not appear in our 3D views. We will create a new material and give it 100% transparency to achieve this. Scroll down in the group list and select the miscellaneous folder. In the material list below, right click and choose Add Element. At the top of the dialog box that appears, give the new material a name of Demolition. At the bottom of the dialog, click on the Display Settings Details. In the Rendering Effects section, this will display the various finished properties for the material. We want to drag the transparency value all the way over to 100%. This will make the wall totally transparent in 3D views. Click OK. Click OK again in the Materials dialog box. At the bottom of the component list are the 2D structure and 2D veneer. These represent how the line work will appear on the 2D drawings. Click on the one to select it and then holding down the Shift button, select the other. Holding down the Shift button allows you to multiple select components and change their options at the same time. At the bottom of the dialog box is the Line Style options. Click on the Select button. This will bring you to the Line Styles dialog box where you can choose a line style for the components. Since these lines will be depicting demolished structure, we want to be a dashed line. Click on the Light Building Lines group and a list of building line styles will appear. Choose the light dashed brown line style and click OK. In a 2D view, our structure to be demolished will have a dashed appearance. Click on the Quantity tab. In this area, you can define the pricing for the wall. Since this is structure to be demolished, you have two choices. One, if you don't want to include its removal pricing in your final bill of materials, uncheck the Include Element in Quantities and set the assemblies to none. If you want to associate a cost for the demolition work, then type in a price, which will be a price per square foot, and ensure that the assemblies option is set to none. Click OK to add the new demolition wall to the catalog choices. You can also repeat this process for doors and windows. Click on the Elements pull-down menu and select Windows. In the group list, scroll down and select Custom, and in the window list below, right-click and choose Add Element. At the top of the dialog box, give the window the name Demolish Window. Under the Basic tab, you can specify the required sizing of the window. Click on the Appearance tab. Select the window frame in the component list and then holding down the Shift key, select the Swing option. By holding down the Shift key, we select all the elements at the same time. Click on the Select button and the Materials dialog box will appear. Choose the new demolition material we created earlier and then click OK. The window will now be non-visible in 3D views. Click on the Select button in the Line Stein area. Choose the light dashed brown line style and click OK. In a 2D view, the window will have a dashed appearance. Click on the Quantity tab. In this area, you can define the pricing for the window. Since this is a window to be demolished, you have two choices. One, if you don't want to include its removal pricing in your final bill of materials, uncheck the Include Element in Quantities and set the Assemblies option to None. If you want to associate a cost for the demolition work, then type in a price and ensure that the Assemblies option is set to None. Click OK to add the new demolition window to the Catalog Choices. Back at the Catalog Manager, click on the Elements menu and then the Surfaces option. After we create a roof for our structure, we will be converting it to surfaces so portions of it will quantify the new construction and the existing portions will not quantify. The surfaces list will appear. Select the roof surfaces group and then right click in the element list and select add element. The surfaces dialog box will appear. At the top of the dialog, give the roof the name existing roof. Under the Size tab, set the surface type to Roof and give it a thickness of the roof sheathing. Click on the Quantity tab and take the check mark out of Include Element in Quantities option and set the Assembly option to None. Click OK. OK again to return to the Drawing Screen area. Under the Building tab, select the Wall Tool icon. The Catalog panel will display a list of the wall types available. 
In the list is the existing wall type that we have specified earlier in the video. Select it and move your cursor onto the drawing screen area. Pick a point on the screen to begin drawing the existing structure. I highly recommend only drawing those elements that you require. The more elements that you add to a model, the larger the file size will become. So if the interior structure is not required for 3D viewing or 2D representation, then leave them off the drawing. For the sake of this exercise, we will only draw the exterior shell. When inserting the walls, you can use the commander to type in the existing wall lengths. In the case of composite walls, the walls are drawn on the center line of the inside structural wall. To achieve accurate finished dimensions right away, you need to determine the width of the wall and its components if using a composite wall. Then either add or subtract the value when drawing the wall layout. Continue inserting walls until all of the existing walls are inserted that are required in your new remodel. Once the existing structure is inserted, you can then determine where the renovation will exist and which existing walls will be demolished or altered. First start by laying out the exterior walls. Choose a wall from the database that will match your new wall construction. Move your cursor onto the drawing screen and draw the new walls. You will notice because of our earlier work to the database that the new construction has a nice line weight compared to the existing structure, so it will stand out on the printed construction documents. Click on the doors icon and add in any doors that are required in the remodel. You can use any of the existing doors in the catalog to insert in the new construction area. These doors will have quantity properties and have regular appearances in 2D and 3D. Click on the Windows icon and choose a window style for the new addition. If you right click, you can insert the window in the center of the wall, or you can choose the Enter Insertion Offset option and specify an exact distance that the window will insert from a corner. A dimensional guide will appear and you need only to click to insert it at the specified distance. Right click and choose Finish when all of the windows have been inserted. Click on the ceiling icon and choose the Ceiling by Room option. In the catalog panel, choose a ceiling type for the new room. Then move your cursor onto the drawing screen and left click to insert it in the new addition. Click again to insert one in the existing structure and then right click and choose finish. Select the ceiling surface in the existing structure and then right click and choose properties. Click on the quantities tab and take the check mark out of the include element in quantity option and change the assembly option to none. Now the element will not appear in the quantity report. When inserting a ceiling by room, it will insert it inside the wall lines. In our addition, we will be demolishing a portion of the wall between the new and old structure. We therefore need to stretch the new ceiling to meet the existing. Click on the ceiling in the new remodel area. Squares appear at the corners and in the middle of each ceiling length. Ho hover your cursor over the blue square and the cursor will change to a move cursor. Left click and holding the cursor down, stretch the ceiling to the new location and then release the mouse button. We will repeat this process for floors. Click on the floor icon and choose the floor by room option. In the catalog panel, choose a floor type for the new room. Then move your cursor onto the drawing screen and left click to insert it in the new addition. Click again to insert one in the existing structure and then right click and choose finish. Select the floor surface in the existing structure and then right click and choose properties. Click on the quantities tab and take the check mark out of the include element in quantity option and change the assembly option to none. Now the element will not appear in the quantity report. Click on the floor in the new remodel area. Squares appear at the corners and in the middle of each floor length. Hover your cursor over the blue square and the cursor will move to a move cursor. Left click and holding the cursor down, stretch the floor to the new location and then release the mouse button. Now let's put a roof on. Select the roof icon and then the roof by perimeter option. The roof options will appear in the catalog panel to the right. Select a roof surface that matches your construction type. Move your cursor onto the drawing screen and left click once inside the model. Our roof will form over the new, entire new and existing model. Since we only want to quantify the new roof portion and the roof is in considered one unit, 
we will convert the roof to surfaces and change the roof over the new addition to quantifiable materials. Select the roof surface and then right click and choose Convert Roof to Surfaces. Select the existing roof surface element we created earlier and click OK. Now, when now that the layout has been created, evaluate which walls need to be altered. In our example, the wall between the new construction and the existing structure will be partially demolished. Five feet of the wall will be demolished to create a nice open entrance to the new family room. To determine the five foot break point of the wall, we will insert a linear dimensional guide. Select Tools, Dimensions, Linear Dimension. A dimension will attach to your cursor and the command line in the lower left corner of the screen will prompt you to pick a start point for the dimension. Click to insert it at one corner of that wall. Drag your cursor to the right and type 5 feet and press enter. This will create a 5 foot dimension and it will attach to your cursor. Stretch it up and click to insert it. The extension line will act as our guideline to break the wall. Choose the zoom window tool and click your left mouse button. Keep the mouse button held down, create a window around the wall. Release the mouse button and it will magnify it on your screen. Select the wall and then right click and choose break. Click on the point where the extension line meets the wall and it will break at that point. Right click again and select deselect all. Now select the portion of that wall that will be demolished and then right click and choose replace. The catalog access dialog box will appear and allow you to choose another wall from the database. Select the demolition wall and click OK. Right click and choose deselect all. You will notice that the wall now appears dashed in appearance. Let's also replace the window with a demolition window and then we re can review the model in 3D. Select the window and then right click and choose replace. Select the demolition window from the catalog access dialog box and click OK. Now right click and choose deselect all. Select the 3D button and choose the place new camera option. A camera will attach to your cursor. Left click to insert it in the model and then adjust the view angle of the camera and click again to see your model in 3D. You will notice the demolished wall is now invisible and allows you to see the completed remodel. Renovation design certainly has more challenges than new construction. An Envisioneer provides the tools to not only show new construction but existing structure and demolition work as well. Before beginning a new renovation project in the software, remember to start with the catalog so you have the appropriate elements to insert into your model.